everyone. Thank you for joining us for our next Facebook Live session. Um, I'm Susanna with ATBS. For those of you who don't know us, um, ATBS stands for American Truck Business Services, and we've been in business for over 20 years now, um, helping owner operators on the road with their taxes, accounting, and bookkeeping, and just helping them have a more profitable, profitable business. Um, so today's topic, very timely. Um, pretty soon you should be getting your 1099s. Um, if you haven't already, and then that means it's time to start working on taxes. So today's topic is some of the most common tax questions that we get from owner operators. And here to answer those questions are um, is Barney Moran, who is our tax manager here at ATBS. Um, so we're just going to go through a list of questions. If you guys have more questions after we're done, feel free to type those into the comment section of this post, and then we'll answer those after the broadcast as soon as we can. Um, so we're just going to dive right into it. Um, thanks for being here, Barney. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, so the first question I have for you is just some general tax questions that we get. Um, how much should owner-operators set aside for their business taxes? For owner-operators, uh, estimating taxes should be based on actual income. Uh, that's what we recommend because your income can vary from month to month. So getting an actual estimate based on your real world income is the best way to go. Uh, you, you wouldn't want to inaccurately overpay or underpay. And what we, the general rule of thumb is set aside 25 to 28%, set it aside, and then based on a review of your actual income, you would know what to pay. And we can help you with that. Perfect. Um, if a driver can't get their tax return filed on time, what should they do? Well, let your tax preparer know as soon as possible, and they can file a six-month extension for you. It's just really important to understand that extension does not mean it's an extension of when your taxes are due. You want to pay your estimated taxes and your taxes due on time, and the extension just avoids a penalty for filing six months late. Perfect. And then, um, do you think most owner operators would re receive a tax refund? This really is going to apply to your unique situation. Um, usually, it's not likely for an owner operator that's running a clean business because we work hard to get you to owe close to nothing. Remember, if you get a refund, it's, it's like giving the IRS an interest free loan. Right, so you probably just would want to break even is, is the ideal situation. Yes, that's what we shoot for. Um, and then, so drivers should be expecting to get their 1099 forms if they haven't already. Who's going to be sending to them those to them and where will they get them from? Okay, 1099. So for those of you new to the business or just have not heard that before, uh, a 1099 is a tax form that allows the IRS to track any payment that's given to you by a company. Um, to independent contractors for their services. Excuse Bless me. <laughs> so your carrier, okay, the carrier that's paying you will send you a 1099 form, uh, not your tax preparer. We're the ones that ask for a copy of it because that helps us build your tax return. And those forms will be due to you from the carriers by January 31st, 2019. Perfect. And then if a driver hasn't paid their quarterly taxes this year, which tends to be the case for a lot of newer owner operators, um, what's going to happen to them? Well, look, if you fail to pay your quarterly taxes, you're going to be charged a late penalty. Uh, let's assume that you've also failed to file your taxes. That's another penalty tacked on to what you would have given the government. The current interest rate is 3%, and that gets charged on top of what you owe after the penalties been added in. Okay. Um, what tax forms do drivers need to complete uh, for a contract laborer, for example, if they have an employee team driver? Okay. So if you have an employee, run them through payroll and then issue them a W-2 at the end of the year. If you had a contract laborer, then you would issue them a 1099. Okay. Um, and then should drivers set, um, file separate tax returns uh, for owner-operator earnings and company driver earnings if they happen to hold both positions within the year? No. As a sole propri proprietor, you would file one return. It's a 1040. And the 1040 will contain a Schedule C, and that lists your business earnings and expenses. Okay, perfect. 
And now we're going to talk a little bit about per diem, which is always a big topic because um, it is a very uh, big deduction that drivers can take. And there's been a lot of changes with it because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and also in October the rates increased as well. Um, so lots of questions have come with that. So what what really is per diem, and how does that deduction work? Okay, so per diem is a fancy name. It's a Latin name for per day. And that's kind of a good way to help you remember that. It's a tax deduction for meals, some incidental expenses on the days you're working away from home. Okay. Uh, the current rate is, I'm going to throw some math at you, but it's basically 80% of $66 for full days and three quarters of that amount for partial days. Partial days are the days when you leave home and the days that you come back. Um, so for full days or any days you need to stop driving due to the hours of service rules and are, or are unable to drive due to on the road repairs. So visiting family or friends do not count as per diem days. Um, if you are using a motel or hotel while on the road, per diem is still deductible, but not during when you're home. And then um, one thing that changed quite a bit because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is whether or not um, company drivers can take per diem. Um, and just to clarify, a company driver is someone who's going to receive a W-2 tax um, form, and a 1099 driver is what we refer to as an owner-operator. So a W-2 employee company driver, can they take per diem now? Based on what we know, the answer is no. The per diem deduction has been taken away from employee company drivers that get W-2s. Perfect. And if you're confused about um, what kind of tax return you're going to be filing and if you are entitled to that deduction or not, feel free to give us a call and uh, we'll be happy to walk you through that. Um, still some topic of per diem, can owner operators use e-log records to count the number of days that they were out on per diem? Yes, you can if you have the full year log of e-records. So you want to contact your carrier every three to four months and ask for copies of your e-logs. Uh, many carriers delete e-logs every six months, so do not wait till the end of the year to get your e-logs. Right. Um, all right, so now we're going to move into some family-related questions as they pertain to taxes, because um, we do get a lot of these as well from our clients. So um, should people file, file their tax returns separately from their spouses? Well, you have choices. As a married taxpayer, you can file married filing jointly, or you can file married filing separately. Uh, generally, married filing jointly works out better uh, in terms of your tax exposure for the taxpayer, but not always. So ATBS can prepare the return both ways and then provide you with both of them to indicate the best tax outcome in your situation. And then, is it possible to claim a parent as a dependent on taxes? Well, to meet the support requirements, it's necessary to claim your parent as a dependent on your tax return. You must cover more than one half of your parent's support costs, so more than 50%. So that's, they could be food, housing, lodging expenses, clothing, uh, medical services and or equipment. So you want to track that. And you want to be able to show that you paid for more than 50%, 51% of your parents' costs to live for that year. Uh, to be a qualifying relative, the person you're caring for can be your parent, uh, in-law, or grandparent. Okay, perfect. And then how much Social Security income is taxable for those that are receiving that? Okay, how much Social Security income is taxable depends on your total income and your marital status. Uh, for example, if you file a federal tax return as an individual, not married, and your income is between $25,000 and $34,000, uh, you may have to pay income tax on up to half of your Social Security benefits. Um, if your income is more than $34,000, and then up to 85% of your Social Security benefits could be taxable. If you are married and you file a joint return, and you and your spouse have a combined income that is between $32,000 and $44,000, uh, then you may have to pay income tax on up to 50% of your Social Security benefits. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and then should drivers claim dependence on their quarterly estimated taxes when they make those payments? 
No, no, you, you should not claim dependence on your quarterlies. Those are, that information is part of your formal tax file. We, we may look at some of your tax situation for your quarterlies to help get an accurate, but you will not file that on your quarterly. Perfect. All righty, so let's move into a little bit um, of some more de um, deduction questions that we get from our clients. So is fuel um, a tax deductible expense for truck drivers? Absolutely, fuel and fuel tax is part of the cost of fuel. So it's deductible as an outgoing owner operator fuel expense. Okay. And can drivers claim um, the home office deduction? This is something that we get asked quite a bit. You know, it is possible for an owner operator to qualify for a home office deduction, but you need to meet two tests. The home must use be regular must be used regularly, and that doesn't mean it has to be used every day, but there's a regular pattern of use and it has to only be used for business. No personal activity can occur within the home office, the confines of the home office. Mm -hmm. um, the home office needs to be your principal place of business. So if you conduct business outside of your home, such as being an over the road trucker, uh, but you use the office space when you come home while you're home to conduct business calls, organize receipts, and just overall business functions, then it's possible to qualify for a home office deduction. Um, there have been conflicting information about what qualifies for a home office deduction, but if you can prove the office is used exclusively for business, then you should be entitled to that deduction. Uh, the IRS may challenge the validity of the deduction for a trucker, since your truck uh, can be considered your primary place of business. So that's why we want to walk through how it was used and make sure that we have all our ducks in the row in how we have logged our activity. Perfect. Um, for an owner operator, is clothing tax deductible? Uh, generally, uh, very specific items like gloves, steel toed boots, boots that are required as part of the job could be deductible. Um, you just want to understand the general rule of thumb is general everyday clothing is not considered deductible by the IRS. Okay. Um, and what about a gym membership? Can drivers deduct that? You know, if you if it's prescribed by a doctor to treat to treat a specific medical condition, um, then you and you get a letter. You can join the gym after you get that diagnosis. And yes, it could be deductible under medical. Okay, it's good to know. Um, and then medical expenses in general are those deductible? If they are more than seven and a half percent of your adjusted gross income, you can deduct the amount that passes that seven and a half percent. So uh, let's do an example. If you had an adjusted gross income of fifty thousand and six thousand dollars of it were medical expenses, um, you could multiply fifty thousand by 0 0.75, okay, and that would you'd find that expenses that are over three thousand seven hundred and fifty would be deductible. Um, this this leaves you with. A, a medical expense of twenty-two fifty, six thousand minus thirty-seven fifty. Okay, good to know. And then, if a driver um, purchased an auxiliary power unit this year, can they receive a tax credit for that purchase? Yeah. So you want to send your tax preparer the receipt or the bill of sale for the APU. Also, write down the hours it was used or the gallons of fuel used, so we can also get you a tax credit for that. Okay. And a lot of truck drivers have um, a dog on board to keep them company and, um, you know, to kind of hang out on the truck and be kind of a guard dog from time to time. Is um, the expenses related to that dog, are those deductible? Yes. If the dog is acting as a security for the truck, it is considered a guard dog and its expenses, uh, food, veterinary, uh, can be deducted from your taxes. Good to know. Um, and then here's kind of a section of other just miscellaneous questions pertaining to taxes. Um, if someone sold a home this year, is the profit uh, taxed? So selling your primary residence is what I'm going to assume. Depends on how long you owned it and lived in the home before the sale and how much profit you made between what your purchase cost was, improvements, and the sale price. Uh, if you owned and lived in the place for two of the five years before the sale, then up to $250,000 of the profit is tax-free if you're a single person. 
Uh, if you're married and file a joint return, the tax-free amount can double to $500,000. The law lets you exclude an amount from your taxable income. If you sold for a loss, though, that loss is not deductible. Okay. And let's see, if someone rented a home this year, uh, do they have to claim that on their income or on their taxes as income? Yeah, rental income needs to be reported on a Schedule E. Schedule E. And then finally, um, what's the penalty for not having health insurance in 2018? Okay, so the insurance mandate uh, repeal takes effect in 2019, but it is still in place as you're filing your 2018 taxes. That penalty is $695 per adult and $347.50 per child uh, for a maximum penalty of $2,085 per family or 2.5% of your total family income, whichever is greater. Okay, great. So I know this has been a really long list of questions um, that we kind of went through pretty quickly, but if you have additional questions, please feel free to post those in the comment section and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, Barney, thank you so much for joining us and uh, answering these questions for us. If you guys need help with your taxes, um, have any questions for us, check us out on the web, atbs.com, or give us a call at 866-920-2827. We'd be happy to walk you through the services that we provide, um, and hopefully we can help you get your tax return done and done correctly this year. Thanks. Thanks, Barney. Thank you. Bye, guys.